it's me, Emily Gamble, we're back here with Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, where we are in the middle of wrecking this cross exam with Mood Matrix and therapy and stuff. Two notes! Oh, this is such a jam. My volume's too low. Yeah, that's more like it. Don't worry, I'm not blowing my ears up. These headphones are just weirdly quiet. <laughs> Number one, I can't actually tell if Blackwell's being like a dick just because. He likes condescending over Athena because of their like, quasi-sibling relationship. And he just likes being annoying. Or if it's to dissuade her genuinely because he's still worried about her being in court after, you know, like the severe trauma of the previous game. So I can't tell if he's being sweet or just being a jerk for being a jerk's sake. And I'm going to give him, I'm going to try to give him the benefit of, a, of the doubt. Although, if you are trying to be sweet, there's, there are better ways. <laughs> and the other thought I had was if uh, Wendo is, was initially framed and then he framed little old Bucky, that sort of implies that neither of them were the killer, uh, which kind of makes it sound like Geru. Which case, maybe the motivation was that because they're all, uh, there, there's a qu clear mention Excuse me, there's a clear mention that he's got less experience than her, but he's higher ranked than her, like so there might be like jealousy involved there. Also, I was kindly informed that I've been saying all the names wrong. <laughs> it, it's tornado as in tornado. So we've got typhoon tornado, gale tornado, and wind tornado. Sorry about that. Anyway, there! Noise level zero! Finally! Shantora! The dying message consists of two words, Owen and Forth, but neither of these two words have anything to do with this witness. Oh, really? Then why were they so emotional about it, hmm? People don't just get emotional about random things! Sadmani? Hmm. This topic warrants no further argument. Sure, there may not seem to be any direct connection between Nuendo and the message. For now. But why don't you wait and decide what's necessary after you hear my theory? <laughs> I trust you've hit upon something, Athena. Yep! If my theory is right, we can finally solve the case of Nuendo and the mysterious Owen Forth! Well, go on then. I can already tell this promises to be interesting. <laughs> oh, please, show your theory with the court, Miss Sykes. Are they gonna make me do it, or is she gonna do it? There was something puzzling to me about Windows out of control motions just now. I I'm assuming where this is going is that his original name was Owen before he succeeded the name of Window. But then I don't exactly understand the meaning of fourth. Mm -hmm. Namely, that there were three distinct reactions present. I had never seen that before, and I wondered how it could be possible. Is there a conclusion to this meandering musing of yours? Well, Jesus, if you give me a second. Hold your horses, I'm getting there! So, could a person flip between three distinct emotions of such intensity, like a switch? In the end, I concluded that it just wasn't pot. Oh, because he's got, because he's, he's like character acting? Is that where we're going with this? So Owen is his fourth character or something like that? Is that, is that where we're going with this? <laughs> Ugh. So that's it, is it? A bit unconventional, but I'll grant that it's possible within the realm of psychology. Within the realm of psychology? I'm afraid you'll have to explain it for the old, old random peer on the bench. <laughs> Your Honor, my theory is that Wendo has multiple personalities. <clears throat> Which is called dissociative personality disorder, is that right? With so many distinct person personas, it's clear to me that Wendo has dissociative identity disorder. That's the one. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a bit of a leap, but you're the psychologist here, not me. I completely missed what his honor said, sorry. What, I, what, what does that even mean? <sighs> Your honor, the defense would treat this trial as a child's jest. Multiple personality disorder. No, dissociative identity disorder. That's not what it's called. A preposterous proposition indeed. Would you not agree, witness? How did she know? How did she figure it out? Plunka! <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I did it! I did it, Simon! I've read papers on it before, but, but to think I'd see a case of it for myself! Blimey. Rock artists tell stories as different characters, but as different personalities? I mean, if anything, that's an impressive... I mean, that's just a good way to channel the exceptionality into a job. That's just smart business. Hey, you. Lawyer girl. You got a problem with us? Huh? No! Uh, no, no problem at all! This is all very hard to believe, but now that we've established that the witness has multiple personalities, could each of them please introduce themselves to this court? Hmm. Wendo Tenedo. I'm a Rock Goar storyteller, as you know. Did I say Tenedo again? That's <laughs> earlier in this video, I might have done. <laughs> Hello, everybody! Patches the friendly jester here! <laughs> <sighs> 
Hisagawa. Cardison. Cardison? Cardison? What does that mean? Oh, a prostitute. Cool, good. News to me. Big if true. I can see that posing no problems whatsoever for the rest of this trial. I'm no expert, but I didn't... I wasn't under the impression dissociative identity disorder permitted the different individuals in the body to just come out at will. I thought the, the idea behind the disorder was that they had no control over when they would switch. But they might just be stretching it for the sake of the game being fun. <laughs> and is that all of you? Yes, that's all of us. So there are three personalities in total. Window Patches and Kisugawa, huh? I don't know if I'm saying that right either. <laughs> well, Simon, what do you think now? <laughs> After one lucky duck. Just be glad they were dense enough to help you out. Just, can't you just straight up say I did great for a change? <laughs> you appear to be quite proud of yourself, Defense. Well, I'm doing my job. <laughs> but all you have done is infringe upon the privacy of the witness. I can disagree more, Prosecutor. Now that we know there are three personalities, a new way for us to interpret the meaning of a certain piece of evidence has arisen. A new interpretation? Oh, and fourth, I assume? Ooh, now I'm very curious. What is this piece of evidence you're talking about, Miss Sykes? Knowing what we know about Uendo and his personalities, this now makes perfect sense. That would be the, the oh, and fourth. Take that! The Karuja cards? That's right, Your Honor. Recall the original dying message left at the scene. We didn't have a clue as to what Owen Forth could have possibly meant. But now, with this new information about Wendo and his personalities, isn't it possible that Owen Forth actually means a secret fourth personality of a Wendos? A personality named Owen? What? Clunk. <clears throat> Wendo must have kept his associative identity disorder from us because he didn't want to be associated in any way with that dying message. No, that's not why. We kept our disorder a secret for a different reason altogether. We've been taking advantage of our affliction to act out various Rakugo characters. If word of this got out, well... Our reputation as a Rakugo artist would be tarnished, as with the tornado name. I can see maybe if this... that this is what they were referring to at the beginning... Uh, when the game opens and it says some... Some games are presented as originally written to preserve the games. I can see how this might be construed as slightly offensive. That's why we kept it a secret from everyone except members of the Tenedo School. But really, there is no fourth personality. It's just the three of us in here. So why did you have a... <laughs> a plausible enough sounding story. But it doesn't prove you didn't rearrange the cards, does it? But... Shatara! I will concede that it is highly likely that the witness rearranged the cards. Is Prosecutor Samadhi actually agreeing with us? You guys need to way stop jumping the gun. Whenever a prosecutor says, All right, I guess this makes sense. They're always queuing up for a but. <laughs> now, ever, is it not also possible that the accused killed Master Tornado? And then left that message in order to frame the witness? Well, that's assuming Bucky knew about the DID and uh, understood that we would find out. And he didn't even know I was a psychologist, because he didn't even know I was his lawyer. I don't think. Till this morning. <laughs> right? <laughs> and upon noticing the cards when he found the victim's body, Wendo rearranged Silence. them. Silence! A fantastic tale, but a tale nonetheless. No one outside the Tornado School knew about Wendo's multiple personalities. Wendo just finished saying so himself. Now, well, that is a true but ultimately meaningless point. The witness was only in the dressing room for two to three minutes. That's far too little time to commit murder, wouldn't you say? Objection! Objection! Then who's to say he couldn't have done it before his discovery? Objection. Objection. <sighs> ah, that spring chick memory of yours. Have you already forgotten Prosecutor Blackwell's testimony? Simon's testimony? Yeah. Oh! Geru escorted me to the... Escorted? <laughs> That's not how you say that word. Geru escorted me to the dressing room, but we heard the sound of Rakugo being performed from within. Thinking the master was rehearsing, we decided to wait in the hall until he was done. Yes, which I'd still like to further scrutinize, by the way. Scrutinize, by the way, because what the heck <laughs> are you talking about? There was a TV in there. That's right. Until just a few moments before Oendo entered the dressing room, Typho Tenedo was confirmed to still be alive. <laughs> Not only that, but Uendo was on stage until just before he discovered the body. A bulletproof alibi that I have already confirmed with several audience members. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> that face just never stops being funny. I also heard that his Rakugo performance that day was a steaming pile of... Well, you get the picture. 
<laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Really stung up the stage, I did. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, anyway. And yet I have a perfect alibi. Indeed. Why not land the coup de grace on the... Is it coup de grace or coup de grace? I always forget. Why not land the hit of grace on the defense by describing your alibi, witness? Ooh, testimony! Yay! Okie dokie smokey! Will it be all three of you or just patches? Well, starting with Wendo, anyway. Wendo's alibi! I was on stage until just moments before I went into the dressing room. The entire audience was my witness. But my performance was a huge bust. Not a single soul laughed. I'll never be able to live down how terribly I bombed during that very important show. Hmm. Something seems weird about that. I can't imagine no one laughing at this individual. Look at the way he took one of the things out of his hair to narrate with. Wendo was on stage before he found the body, so he could not have committed this crime. It is time to let it all go to fence and move on. <laughs> Well, get this, Prosecutor Sabari. The Right Anything Agency never gives up. We fight to the bitter end. <laughs> Allow me to say this once more. Let it go and move on. And allow me to say once more, I'm never giving up. Let it go and never. This is pointless. You should have taken advantage of this opportunity while you could, you foolish child. Your worthless convictions only serve to prolong the accused's suffering. If words will not sway you, then perhaps pain will. Oh no, I'm not looking forward to what's going to happen to Athena's ears with, from these beads. Oh no, there are arms! No, ah, no, no! Anything but this! She already saw it happen to Apollo. She knows, she knows that agony is inbound. Oh, okay, it, it brings her hands to her ears, I see. <laughs> What's the big idea, prosecutor somebody? That was but a small dose of punishment for your misguided convictions. Are you now a bit more inclined to give up as instructed? As if! Ow! <laughs> In that case, you must require another dose. No, 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 no! <laughs> Not bloody likely. <laughs> I don't give two flips about your beliefs, but if Sykes don't know where to submit to you here, I won't be able to eat good soba anymore. Yeah, uh, that's right. For Mr. West's future and Prosecutor Blackwell's stomach, I will never give up. You will rue those words, defense. Of that I can assure you. I mean, again, you can't not know you're in the wrong <laughs> when you go, you will rue the, your words. <laughs> I assure you. Anyway, cross-exam time! I completely forget what they said. <laughs> what, what, what was the alibi again? Oh right, you bombed hard. Uh, I was on stage until just moments before I went into the dressing room. The entire audience was my witness. But my performance was a huge bust. Not a single soul laughed. I'll never be able to live down how terribly I bombed during that very important show. Now it's been a few, some days since I recorded the last one, so I don't... Maybe I'm just missing something that obviously contradicts that, but I don't think there's anything as yet. This kind of has the feel of when we have to push on everything, and then they'll be like, I couldn't find anything, and then Black will be like, Think, Athena, was there anything that could have made it sound like <laughs> there was a show going on when there actually wasn't? And they'll be like, The TV! And that's kind of where this is headed. I mean, the TV has been like Chekhov's TV since the start of this. Since they mentioned you could uh, uh, monitor the stage in the dressing room with it. And of course, this is a note thought to have been written by the victim, but it seems more like someone panicked after they killed uh, him and were like, I need to find some way to keep people from going in here. And so they just snatched the nearest piece of something, which was the uh, a, a bit of torn off bit of the uh, the wrapper here. Namely this one. And like scrolled, do not disturb on it and stuck it on the door. Because uh, otherwise, why would you only... I mean, if you were feeling tired, you, you probably wouldn't write it on a, like a, a half cut piece of like <laughs> a box wrapper. You would find something a little more sturdy to hang from your door, right? Anyway, what do they get, Athena? With the audience as, as his witness, let me say those words again. With the audience as his witness, Wendo has a pretty unshakable alibi, doesn't he? You're not giving up, are you? Where's that never say die spirit you displayed earlier? Of course I'm not giving up, Simon! I just know Wendo has something to do with this case. But how will you connect him to the crime when he has an alibi as strong as that? I, I don't know just yet. But I'm going to present press his testimony and keep an eye out for contradictions. That's what I thought we'd do. Let's just press everything then. In that case, I was on stage before I went into the dressing room. Hold it! How can we be sure it was you who was on that stage? Are you asking whether it could have been some imposter? I, I guess so. 
Unlike a big arena, a Rock-A-Go theater is a cozy little place. It would be hard to fool an audience in such an intimate setting, don't you think? Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, if they already knew who you were, I guess, then yeah. God, I'm glad we could clear that up, because I guess you could say... The entire audience was my witness. Hold it! Was there anything special about the stage or your performance that you can tell me? Uh, for example, were the lights dimmer than usual? Were there any problems or accidents? Not a thing. Everything was the same as always. Mr. Prosecutor, you questioned the audience, didn't you? Yes, of course. Apparently nothing seemed to miss to them except, well, one small thing. The performance itself. <laughs> one small thing? Oh, it's so embarrassing! I tried my best, really, I did! But my performance was a huge bust! Not a single soul laughed! Hold it! Do you have any idea what went wrong? Hmm. I'm not sure if it was my performance or if it was just that particular audience. Or maybe it was the story I picked. But every entertainer knows that this kind of thing happens from time to time. I guess that makes sense. Still, I wonder how he could have flopped at his own commemorative show. Maybe I should dig into things a bit more? Uh, the number of audience members... What you performed? You were, you were slated to perform the glutton routine. Is that maybe what this is headed? You performed the wrong show? And that's why no one was <laughs> amused? <laughs> could you tell me which Rocket Ghost story you performed? I could, but I'm not sure if it would mean anything to the uninitiated. Well, even if I might not get it, can't you at least try me? Hmm. Alright. If you insist, the story I performed is called Tokisoba, otherwise known as Time Soba. Time Soba, huh? Yeah, you were slated to. That's that's that was Master Tornadoes. So it sounds like you're lying just so that because that was the one they thought they heard from the room, I think. <laughs> Wait, now I'm confused. Anyway, point is you did the wrong show. Time Soba, huh? If you want us right, he's only said the name of the routine and I'm already lost. <laughs> uh, so you performed Time Soba, did you? What? You know it, Prosecutor Samani? He researched it. In the course of my studies last night, I became familiar with a number of stories. I must say, Defense, you would do well to prepare better for your next trial. <laughs> she didn't even know! Simon, I mean, what's Time Soba about? <sighs> Look it up yourself. <laughs> Allow me to... <laughs> it's not the answer I expected, to be honest. Allow me to give an overview. The story takes place on a winter's night. A man orders a bowl of soba at a street stall. How you doing, sir? What can I get for you? I see I got seaweed top tanamaki soba mixed to uh, shipoku soba. I'll have a bowl of shipoku, my good man, if it sure is cold tonight, isn't it? But there's nothing like a hot bowl of noodles and soup to warm the soul. You know it, sir. One shipoku coming right up. So, how's business? Not so great, sir. Is that so? Well, that's great, because things can only get better from here, right? Wow, prosecutor! The customer talks on and on like this. Finally, when he is done eating, he goes to pay for his soba. So how much do I owe you? That'll be 16 mon, sir. I see. Sorry, but I only have small change on me. I'll count the coins into your palm, so could you hold out your hand for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hey, what time is it? It's nine, sir. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Thanks and bye. <laughs> Very well done, prosecutor somebody. That was excellent. Is the joke that he had the person say nine but didn't actually put a ninth coin, but it sounded because it, they said it out loud, it sounded like he gave a ninth coin, so they, they, they skimmed out. Huh? I don't get it. What was so funny about that? Don't you see? The customer paid with coins, counting them out one by one. Then just after counting eight, he asked about the time, and the sober vendor answered with nine. Oh, now I get it. He made the vendor say nine, and then he continued counting from ten. Got it. Cool. Uh, exactly. He cheated the soba vendor out of one mon with a smooth talking. The story continues on another man who saw the whole thing and tries to do the same, but he bungles the trick and ends up paying more than 16 mon for his soba. The story ends on that as the punchline. You can look up the rest of the details yourself. Or I'm sure prosecutor Sad Monk over there would love to perform it for you after court. So basically it's a story about a man cheating on his soba bill. It's kind of petty, isn't it? <laughs> Is that really all you have to say about this classic story? Time Soba is such a well-known staple of Rock-A-Go that the skill of the artist Objection. is critical. OBJECTION! Fine, so you studied a lot, but we haven't the time for a lecture detour right now, Prosecutor Sad Monk. Oh, I wanted to hear a little more. Yeah, but I suppose it is off topic. Now, getting back to the matter at hand, Miss Sykes, the witness stated that the story I performed is called Toki Soba, otherwise known as Time Soba. Would you like to add the statement to this testimony? Yes, please! Hmm, should I have that statement added to his testimony? BINGO! Bingo! Ho 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 ho! Yes, Your Honor, I'd like to have it added. Very well. 
Imagine if you said no to that, you'd have to listen to that whole thing again. <laughs> Probably. The story I perform is called Toki Soba, otherwise known as Time Soba. Objection! Gwendo, isn't there something odd about the routine you performed? Odd? No, I, I don't think there's anything odd about it. But that's exactly what I find odd, the fact that you don't think it's Objection. odd. Objection. We are discussing the witness's alibi at the moment. Defends the show's program is completely irrelevant. Objection! <laughs> That's where you're wrong, Prosecutor Sanmari. The reason being, it contradicts the statement the witness just made. Wendo, do you know what this is? No. What is it? This is an invitation to the show sent from Master Tenedo to Prosecutor Blackwell. Included in the invitation is a rundown of the show's program, which clearly states that Time Soba was to be performed by Master Tenedo himself. No. <laughs> Wendo, why did you perform the routine your master was scheduled to do? Well, y you see, the reason for that is... Uh, how do I say this? Um, you see, um, let's say it was uh, a prank. That's right, it was just a little joke, you see. <laughs> I was just trying to surprise she show by performing his routine before he did. I don't know if I'd buy that. Was doing the victim's routine really just for laughs? Or why is the camera zooming away from me? Come back! <laughs> hey. Didn't Simon happen to hear Time Soba coming from the dressing room during Wendo's performance on stage? Oh, that wasn't my imagination. I was sure he'd said that. And then I was like, no, wait, I can't remember him, like, as specific as words. So it, it must have been in some way to, even if it wasn't his idea, it, it was someone's idea to to confuse the timeline of events, I assume. Oh, right, okay, so so that's what this is. Sorry, I, I, had, I was kind of dancing around it before, but now I'm understanding. Whoever the killer was, whether it was Wendo or not, had Wendo perform Time Soba on stage that you would hear it over the TV and you would not be certain, you, you would think uh, Shisho, what's his actual name, Taifu Tenedo, was still alive in the room. Anyone who's standing outside. Geiru seems the most likely suspect to me now, in part just from like a writing standpoint of, I don't think it's Bucky, and I think they would be probably hesitant to just pin it on the only person with a, a known disorder. <laughs> that wouldn't really be a good look, writing-wise. So if we're assuming it's Geiru, um, she did that she had Wendo do that, uh, somehow, presumably, in an effort to uh, make Blackwill's testimony look bad for Bucky. Oh, although that doesn't make sense if she was trying to frame Wendo by typing, by writing Owen forth. Uh, I'm not sure, okay, there's, there's things I'm not sure about anyway. Didn't Simon happen to hear Time Soba coming from the dressing room during Wendo's performance on stage? It seems like too much of a coincidence. Wait, can it be- What's the matter? You look like I had him with a dozen eggs to lay. What's with the bird stuff? Stop comparing me to birds! That was a bit more uh, Apollo-ish. STOP COMPARING ME TO BIRDS! Then cease this bird-brained timidity. If something has occurred to you, then lay it out all for us already. Don't breed resentment in those watching your performance. Okay, okay! I don't have a ton of confidence in this theory, but here goes! <clears throat> it looks like Windows Alibi checks out, Your Honor, but... Even though he was on stage at the time, he may have been trying to obfuscate a crucial detail about this case. Are you referring to the Soma Builder man trying to skimp on in the witness's story? I'm not talking about the Rocket Ghost story, Your Honor! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, then what are you talking about, Miss Sykes? What Wendo may have been trying to deceive us about was the cause of the victim's death, the time of the victim's death, what the victim was to perform, the time of the victim's death. Wendo tried to deceive us about the time of the victim's death. What? Yeah. Objection. Objection. What oh, gibberish. Prosecutor Blackwell even testified at the time of the victim's death. I know, but he only testified that way because he and Gedo had complete, been completely taken in. You mean by the Soberville thing? Would you please forget about the story for a second, Your Honor? I was deceived. Pray tell, how did Uendo manage to deceive two people while he was performing on stage? That's easy. All he had to do was use a certain prop in the dressing room. Oh, and what might that be? The proper window used was... Yep, yep. Take that! This TV was used to view what was happening on the stage. Prosecutor Blackwell, when you came to the dressing room, what was the window doing? It was performing time soba. Blast! Could it be? Yes, it could and it was. What you and Gato heard was not Master Tenedo practicing his routine. It was Wendo's performance, has heard through the TV's monitor speakers! I mean, that was some pretty confident confidence from someone that, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a person in the room and the TV. Those must be some really high-quality speakers. Or really low-quality speakers, I guess, depending. 
What? With the TV just inside the inner door of the dressing room, it could easily be heard from the hallway outside. And because we knew that Master Tornado was scheduled to perform Time Sova, we were easily manipulated into thinking he was still alive at that time, rehearsing. Yes, your knowledge of the day's program is why the two of you could be fooled this way. Simon, did the voice you hear belong to Master Tornado? <sighs> With the doors in the way, I couldn't tell exactly who the voice belonged to. But because I heard Time Sova, I just assumed it was Master Tornado. <sighs> I can't believe I was taken in by such a simple mind game! Objection. All of that is mere conjecture. Where is your proof, defense? Objection! <clears throat> Wendell moved the TV back when he discovered the body. After all, he couldn't very well leave it by the door. Because then someone might figure out the trick he'd been playing. <laughs> and there's one more thing about Wendell's actions that's suspicious. And that is? The fact that he flopped so badly on such an important occasion. What's so suspicious about that? Even pros slip up once in a while, you know. But I believe that this time it was intentional. Because Wendu knew it would be strange to hear laughter coming from the dressing room. Oh my! Yipes! I hadn't thought about that that far ahead. Good solve, Athena. Well done. <laughs> Incredible. It's all just a bit too perfect to be sheer coincidence. Plus, if the voice prosecutor Blackwell and Jigeru heard was due to Wendu's scheming, then the victim's time of death could have been earlier than 4 p.m. <laughs> In other words, Wendu could have killed Master Tornado himself! We've got you by the stones now, Lindo, so you better confess everything. I do appreciate that Blackwell's just been, like, hanging out at the bench <laughs> since he showed up the first time. His honor hasn't had anything to say about it. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? We demand an explanation! <coughs> Wendo! <laughs> I... I confess... I, I, I t tampered with the crime scene. Black was his head down like, that's not what I was hoping to hear. Oh, an interesting time to fade out. Is it the defense's claim that Uendo Tenedo is the true murderer in this case? If he tampered with the crime scene, then we have to at least consider him a suspect. Hold it! N now, wait just one minute. Yes, I admit to messing with the dressing room, but I didn't kill Shisho. Then why did you tamper with the crime scene? I... I refuse to answer that question. What?! Shantara! If you suspect this witness, then I have a question for you. What could it be this time? I have to assume, like, Geru told him to mess with it somehow and he doesn't want to sell her out or something. Wendo had absolutely no reason to murder Typhoon Tornado. After all, why would Uendo kill the man who recognized his skills and promoted him? Oh! Uh, well, 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 uh, his motive was, um, I can't think of a single thing. It appears you are also not aware of one other fact. And that is? That the accused visited the dressing room before 4 p.m. as well. Is it not natural, then, to suppose that the accused killed the victim at that time? What?! And nobody told me, Mr. Wendt had also gone there before 4 p.m. We were only discussing the time frame after 4 p.m., so I didn't think to mention it. But now that you have made the time period before 4 p.m. relevant... Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. So, you really do not know what your client was doing during that time frame, do you? Well, it was all very sudden, and, uh... Why did you wait until the very last second to contact me, Simon? Don't you give me that look. <laughs> and just so you know, Bucky never told me it visited the Master before 4 p.m. either. Ah, this sort of thing is exactly why that prosecutor keeps calling us unprepared. The defense will stop squabbling this instant. Cesare, Your Honor. He's not defense. He's just a witness, but whatever. <laughs> prosecutor Sadmari, please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Defense, you know of the soba making implements in the dress room, correct? Is he talking about the equipment for making soba noodles? You speak of the large bowl that is used to mix buckwheat flour and water. The long rolling pin and the special knife that is used to cut the dough into noodles. Precisely. These tools all came from the accused soba shop. You mean, they didn't belong to Master Tornado? Mr. Wet had visited the dressing room to give the victim a soba making lesson. And that visit was before 4 p.m. Hmm. I can't say why, but something about that seems very off to me. Well, I guess it's concerning that, uh, if we're saying Wendo moved the TV back 
Well, I guess we don't know if it was uh, Bucky or Wendo who came first, but if Wendo moved the TV back through the flower, the flower's already out there, and that doesn't look especially good for Bucky if we're assuming he was in there first, because it assumes the flower got all over the place when he murdered him. Uh, uh, not my words, Your Honor. Prosecution's claim. And that visit was before 4 p.m. I'm afraid that after the accused kneaded the dough and made those noodles, he committed the act of murder. But, uh, but, but wait! That doesn't add up! If Mr. Wet killed the victim before 4 p.m., why would he return to that room at a later time? Hold it! Unless it's Bucky. <laughs> Hold it! What's your bar? You can't Kimono when it comes to noodles! Oh my! Um. Hi, I'm Miss Chickadee! Hi, you Simon! The reason I went back is because Master Tanita ordered an uncooked noodle! Oh. Mr. Wet! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Got it back at the end! <laughs> mm. Yesterday, I brought noodle-making tools to the dressing room at around 2 p.m. That's when Master Tornado ordered uncooked soba noodles to stock up on. Uncooked noodles to stock up on? Hey, yes, ma'am! Master Tornado kept a supply of soba noodles from my soba shop in his fridge. It's an exciting day. He only had one serving left, so I went back to my shop to get some more. One serving of the noodles in the fridge? But I thought the fridge was practically empty. Hmm. Anyway, the whereabouts of the missing noodles isn't all that important now. Sorry, I brought noodle making stuff to the dressing room at 2 p.m. and then he ordered more. At 2 p.m. he was said to have only one thing left. Well, that may be that those uncooked ones were what he then ate, I guess? I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, the whereabouts of the missing noodles are, isn't all that important now. The whereabouts are, surely. You ran into me and Gator when you came back to deliver the uncooked soba, correct? And that's right, Sammy. I made time out of my busy day to deliver him noodles. <laughs> and you know what? He ignored me when I called him from the air doorway. He just kept, kept mumbling rock and go lines for ages until I got mad and went back to my job Uh, so that's why he got mad. If what he's saying is true, then there's no way he could be the murderer. Kept mumbling lines, but from the inner doorway. So you mean you went into the room? I mean, oh, I'm a little confused. Because the only reason I could think for why he would just ignore you is if you were mistaking him for the, the TV for him. But how would you do that if you were in the room? I swear I'm telling the truth, Miss Chicken. <laughs> Did you sail away on his skateboard? Everybody, lift quick, get this man to the infirmary. This court has an infirmary? Awesome. So we're going to need one for the rest of the series, it would seem. Well, I dare say he's quite the handful. Tell me about it! Your Honor, please accept the statements Mr. Wet made just now into evidence. Objection. I believe the accused's statement about going to the room at around 2 p.m. is true. For it falls within the victim's estimated time of death. Hmm. Well, that opens up the possibility that the crime was committed between 2 and 4 p.m. When was the exact the estimates again? 2 to 5, right? Okay. We still aren't sure about the murder weapon, though. I was thinking earlier, I guess, if you could strangle someone with, with your hands. Uh, but then I, I thought about it a bit more, and that leaves, like, a red mark. If you're, if you're squeezing on someone's throat that hard, I would think. So the fact that they didn't find one implies that strangulation was not the cause of death. It seems more like a smothering with a pillow or something like that. I'm just thinking the cause of death might help me get a sense of uh, timeline things. There are a few pillows around. He's kneeling on like a mat and then there are like these two cushions over here. Anyway, sorry. Neither here nor there at the moment. That's some critical information. Yes, Your Honor. But other than that one point, Mr. Wet's statements are dubious and without proof. Objection! Objection! Well, how is, what, what makes you say that statement of his was with proof? But they're the words of the defendant himself. Simon, back me up here. He has a point. If I were the prosecutor, I wouldn't accept them either. Simon, that's because you're a bully. <laughs> While I understand the defense's feelings on the matter, uh, this court is unable to accept anything other than the time the defendant made his visit. Why? Sorry, how did he prove that? It's all just his... His word, right? He just says, I brought the tools at 2pm. There's no evidence of that. That's really weird. Okay, whatever, fine. That's definitely fact and happened. This guy who's wasted off his ass is 100% reporting this accurately. And we can take that as fact. 
Anything else he says is horse shit. Didn't happen. <laughs> now what do I do? I trust you have no further objections, defense. At last, the time has come to send the soul of the victim onward to the twilight Silence. realm. Silence! <coughs> what are you yabbering on about, prosecutor sad monk? Quit your yapping. <laughs> we still have something we need to question who I know about. We do? Like what? What, don't just stand there? But we don't have any evidence left to present. Have you forgotten already? Isn't there still a hidden witness you have yet to question? A hidden witness? Oh, that's right! <laughs> Your Honor, there's still one more issue we haven't finished discussing yet. Oh, and what is this bit of unfinished business? We haven't finished discussing this issue related to Endo, Owen. We still have to discuss the possibility of a fourth personality, the one named Owen. Are you suggesting that this fourth personality of a Windows might be the true culprit? Jeez, not that again. I told you we don't know anything about this Owen. You've been oddly silent until then. Look, Wendo, I know you don't have any motive to kill your master, but this Owen may have one for all we know. Come clean now, Wendo. You've got another personality stashed away, haven't you? Please tell us everything you know about Owen. That's enough. The witness has already stated that he knows not of any Owen character. Bravo! You tell him, Mr. Prosecutor! <laughs> hey, Patches. If you claim you don't know Owen when you really do, that's tantamount to perjury. If you want to exercise your right to remain silent, however, well, that's a different story. Do not listen to the depraved prosecutor witness. You will be tainted with his evil. I'd... So I'd... If the name Owen doesn't mean anything to you, then why the hell were you, like, flipping your absolute shit when we brought it up? I gotta say, though, uh, having someone with DID as a, an explanation for why Athena's Moon Matrix was acting unpredictably is an exceedingly cool twist. <laughs> Do you have any idea how dark and cold a prison cell is? <laughs> I, I exercise my right to remain silent! What's this now? Changing horses in midstream, are you? Shut up! I will remain silent and that's it! <laughs> Patches, you fool, you stay out of this. <laughs> Patches is not the brightest bulb in that box you call a noggin, is he? The fact that he switched from I don't know any Owen to I will remain silent has proved that he does know about Owen. There it is again. Simon's formidable psychological ma manipulation tactic. I mean, it's not proof, but it's, it's it does suggest it pretty strongly. I'm sure glad he's on my side today. He's been way better at everything in this game than Till Destiny's. You dirty, despicable, depraved prosecutor. You were leading the witness. Witness, there is no need for you to submit yourself to the defense's questioning. Objection! Objection! <clears throat> Your Honor, Window is definitely hiding something. Please allow me to question this witness about the existence of Owen. I mean, he does have a right to remain silent regardless, right? I suppose only this witness can confirm or deny the existence of Owen for us. I thought you said other members of the Tornado School knew about his multiple personalities. Oh, very well, I will allow the defense to proceed. <laughs> Conquer. Although I guess this game's version of DID has the characters able to switch uh, manually on a dime. Maybe that is a thing that some certain people with DID could do. I'm not sure. I didn't think so. I'm, 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 I don't have the, the studies under my belt that Athena does, though. Witness testimony about Owen. High tempo, good sign. I've never met any personality named Owen. Huh. Patches was just blurting out nonsense in a panic. I never noticed that the hairstyle changes between the characters as well. That's awesome. We're always aware, so we definitely notice if a personality like that showed up. Hmm. How dare you treat me like a criminal based on mere conjecture. Wow, how am I supposed to deal with the testimony of three personalities? Unless I can prove the existence of Owen here, it's all over. You best screw your courage to the sticking place and attack their testimony head on. All right, I will. Stop piling pressure on me. You have to draw out some info. Anything to drag Owen out into the open. So it sounds like we're going to be doing some more pressing. Cross examination. About Owen. Right, I've never met any personality named Owen. Patches was just blurting out nonsense in a panic. We're always aware, so we definitely notice if a personality like that showed up. How dare you treat me like a criminal based on mere conjecture? What do we think of Athena? I should have figured that he's not going to just give in like that. There's got to be some sort of key to unlocking a Windows fourth personality. Personally, I can't wait to see who will slip up first. But it better not be you. Well, it won't. 
And if I can't find any inconsistencies, then there's always one thing to do, and that's press. I'm with you there. I probably should press on anything, but let's start with, uh, we're always aware, so we definitely notice if a personality like that showed up. That sounds important. Hold it! But what if for some reason you three were unconscious at the time of the incident? If the three of you weren't alert and aware, what would happen? If what would happen? I'm not even sure what you mean. <laughs> I mean, you three share the same memories, right? But what if Owen is different? What, what if he has memories separate from yours? Maybe Owen emerges when the three of you are unaware or unconscious? Objection. Objection. Instead of speaking as if this fourth personality is a foregone conclusion, I suggest you prove his existence first. Well, we've already seen three personalities. A fourth wouldn't be a stretch. You dishonor the victim and this court by jumping to such conclusions without proof. Have you ever heard these old sayings, Prosecutor Salmani? What happens twice will happen thrice. If you see one, there are likely 30 in your home. I'm basing my theory on such premises! Comparing us to cockroaches. We bug you that much, girly? But how do you intend to prove it? How will you prove that all three personalities became unconscious, as you say? Unless you can do that, all of this talk is merely empty speculation. Well, my mood matrix does read three emotion, uh, four emotions, <laughs> and each of the other personalities seem to be feeling a different one. The, the three they felt were fear, uh, anger, and surprise, right? So presumably Owen was feeling some joy, maybe? And that's how we're gonna get to the bottom of this? Well, well uh, I, uh, uh... Don't be so timid. If you don't have it, then find it. Look for something that can render a window and the other's unconscious. Simon's right. I can't back down now. It's my client, Mr. Wet, I have to... Wait, Mr. Wet? Unconscious. Oh, like alcohol? Is that where we're going with this? Let me rest! <laughs> Maybe if I were a little regular flour dough for udon noodles, but I'm fresh like my soba, and you don't know, like soba dough or rest. It's all about the three freshes. Grind it back with these fresh, cut the dough fresh, and boil the noodles for- <laughs> Is blocked out. Mr. Wet, falling unconscious. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. Recycles? Do you have proof to back up your theory? I'm not losing health here, so I assume yes is the right answer. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any proof about alcohol consumption going on. Oh, well, I guess I, we don't know what's in this bottle here. Could very well have been alcoholic. It, it has the look of alcoholic. And I guess we don't know what the drinks in the fridge are either. Uh, screw it. I'm just curious what she'll say if I say yes. Presumably, uh, they would have told me already if I would lose health for this. Actually, let me just say no for it, because you know, I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, I'm afraid not, Your Honor. Of course you do, Athena. Have another good look at the crime scene photo. Okay. <laughs> mm, uh, something that could have made the three of them lose consciousness. Was there anything like that in the dressing room? Okay, so he's just telling me I do. Okay, so I can just put the photo there. Cool. I was I was thinking maybe it would be something where I had to press on the other ones first, and they would tell me, That drink in that picture is alcoholic. And if I didn't have that information yet, it would be like the, uh, like the, um, uh, the crime scene photo of the previous case where we had to learn first that it, that was as Trust and Me saw it when we got there. I thought it was one of those things where we, we needed a bit more information before I was allowed to use that evidence, even though it made sense enough to me to question it. But, um, I should have known from the fact that yes wasn't gonna lose me any health, that I was allowed to, that I would have already had the evidence required. Anyway, I assume we're gonna be able to pick, put, put the picture here and then point at that bottle. Yep, I, I've got, I have a band, how? <laughs> yes, Your Honor, I do. The proof is right here in this crime photo. Please? In that case, please point out what supports your theory. This most likely is what caused Wendell to lose consciousness. Take that! This is probably what made Orlando lose consciousness. Oh yes, the sake. And isn't it just like Master Tornado to pick a fine brand like Camel? Sake? Oh, you mean like rice wine? Hold it! Hold it! Oh, please, don't call it rice wine. That's so unsophisticated, and it's not even wine. Hmm, silly girl. I must agree, you need to become more cultured, Athena. Tomato, tomato! It's made of rice, and people get drunk from drinking it, right? It's called sake and a story. Fine, sake it is then. My caramba, everyone's so touchy about these things. I recall Master Tornado would often have a drink or two before performing. He said it made him more eloquent. Drinking too much of the stuff can make one lose consciousness, though, of course. I mean, you have to be pretty intensely drunk for that. And look, there were two glasses on the table. Wendell, I believe your master offered you some rice, uh, I mean, I mean, sake. 
and then you must have drank too much and passed out. Is it sake or sake? I think it's sake. Never mind, everyone's saying sake. But isn't that accented E make an A sound? Anyway, <laughs> that's when your fourth personality, Owen, emerged. <laughs> I just noticed how impressive it is that you make a smoke ring when you're smoking like this, this like strainer thing. I drank sake. Oh, that's a good one. We have a real sweet tooth, you see. So yes, we did accept a sugary red bean bun, but since we were really dislike sake, we said no thank you to that. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're real weak when it comes to booze. <laughs> Actually, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Even a tiny drop can knock us right out. So you see, I had a sweet manju bun, but I didn't drink any sake. What? But, but that can't be right. Sake. Oh, well, in Japanese it said more like sake. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right when I say sake. What? But that can't be right. <sighs> the defense demands that the glasses be examined right away. You amateur, did you really think I had not already done so? Your foolishness is beyond the pale. Just don't tell me! There was no trace of the witness having touched either of the glasses, naturally. Right, of course. How about the bottle? Any chance they drank it, drank it directly from the bottle? Mr. Sykes, would you like the witness's statement added to his testimony? Uh, yes, please, Your Honor. Very well. I had a sweet manju bun, but I didn't drink any sake. Uh, is there like, there aren't enough missing for that maybe? I guess that's where they're going. Like there's like one that looks like it was cut cleanly in half here. And then the rest appear to be in the box still. So you didn't have one, you started one maybe. I can probably put that here. Objection! Oh, no I can't, Never mind. The witness's statement is absolute nonsense, your honor. And this evidence proves it. Wild gas uncommon. Is it? Shush! You're not supposed to tell! <laughs> hmm. That strange device says what you're really thinking, doesn't it, Miss Sykes? In other words, the only real nonsense here is your wild guess, isn't it? Ouch! It too, Widget! <laughs> wow, okay, wasn't expecting that. Um, alright, uh, sorry, you had a manju bubble and didn't drink, didn't drink any sake. Hold it! So if you had even a tiny sip of sake, you'd conk right out, huh? That's why you didn't touch the glass that Master Tornado offered, correct? Yes, that's right. Then maybe you ate something that had sake in it as an ingredient? I don't know what's in a manju bun anyway. I don't recall doing anything like that. He doesn't recall doing it, but that doesn't mean necessarily mean he didn't. He just might not have known that he did. I better take another good look at the evidence. So we didn't drink any sake, huh? Oh boy, now we're in trouble. That kind of answer is exactly why Sad Monk keeps insulting you. Now use your head! There are countless ways a window could have gotten sake into his mouth besides drinking it. Well, I don't know about the countless part, but... But nothing. Give it some thought and you'll figure something out. Are we trying to say that the drink spilled into the bun? Because it looks spilled here? The photograph would have worked there anyway, if that were true, I guess. So the witness must have had something that contained sake. Is there anything in the court record that hints at something like that? I mean, yeah, the, the drink is spilled, but I wasn't allowed to put the photograph here. That is what I just tried, right? Whoops. Uh, anyway, let me try pushing on everything else, just in case we need they need more evidence. It is a situation where I need to learn something new from the rest of this. You never met any personality named Owen. Hold it! Met, huh? Is that how you experience each other? Like people meeting on the street? Well, it's more like all three of us are always here. And the personality that's most suited at the moment is the one that comes out. So when you're out, Uendo, what are the other two doing? Well, we never know when our turn will come, right? So we stand by and listen. So that means all three of you share the same memories? I never really thought about it, but I guess that's right. Mm. I see. Thank you. Please continue. Patches was just blurting out nonsense in a panic. Hold it! Patches, can I have a word with you, please? <laughs> Why, hello, you rang! You said at first that you didn't know anybody named Owen, but then you exercised your right to remain silent. Were you afraid of committing perjury? Well, <laughs> you see... I'll take over from here if you don't mind. Listen, I hate to say it, but Patches is about as smart as a sack of rocks. If you grill him with a bunch of high faulting words, he's gonna want to keep silent. I see. So looking after loose-tongued Patches is your role. Is it Miss, Kag Miss K Kisugawa? Well, I don't know about that, but... Anyway. I do know that Patches was just flustered, and that's why I decided to remain silent. We're always aware I already did that one. How dare you treat me like a criminal based on mere conjecture? Hold it! Since nobody involved with this case is named Owen, we have to explore the possibility that he's a hidden fourth personality of yours. 
After all, the cards read Owen oh, Forth. But how can you be so sure that's what the cards really mean? What else could they possibly mean? Well, for example, Owen the Fourth Hitter. Who in the world is that? He's a baseball player, a really great one too. Owen Gonzalez, 36 years old. He's a cleanup fourth place hitter, of course. If such a famous baseball player was there hanging around in the theater, he would have drawn a lot of attention to himself, don't you think? Well, then how about this? Maybe it means Owen Fourth, like I O N four thousand. And who is this mysterious N person? <laughs> Insert Pokemon reference. What? N isn't a person. It was Shiso's favorite hobby shop, N Joy. He was a huge model train collector. Obviously, you should know that person who has only met us this morning. I see. Maybe he owed the hobby shop some money. So he left a note to remind himself. And cut the cards on the table. Shiso worked in mysterious ways. <laughs> Are you even taking this seriously? <laughs> I'm being completely serious. The point is, Owen Forth could mean just about anything. Uh, I, I suppose you're right. I guess I ever approach this from a different angle. Hang on. I just we bonded, but I didn't drink any sake. Is there any other? Did I? I didn't just put the wrong evidence, right? Like this is clearly what I'm supposed to put here, and say that the drink spilled onto the bun or something, right? Two seconds. No, this is the one I presented. So what? What the h? What, what other evidence works there? It's weird that it still asks me this. Because I, I lose health if I get this next one wrong, right? So, like, I, even though I already answered this, I'm, like, allowed to get it wrong again. <laughs> Unless there's something else I'm supposed to pick there. I will say, I don't really understand how someone being knocked unconscious would just magically wake up. <laughs> and then swap personalities at that juncture. I mean, the, the body is still unconscious, surely. <laughs> but, uh, never mind it, if this is what we're going on. Hang on, it's not something stupid like I'm just supposed to put it on this one instead of this one, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's both the same contradiction. We're always aware, i.e. we didn't drink alcohol and conk out. I didn't drink any sake, i.e. I didn't drink alcohol and conk out. So putting the alcohol on either is for sure the same thing. So I doubt it's that I'm supposed to put the picture here. But that is my only idea. Also, that massive plate of dumplings feels like a... <laughs> something that must come back somehow. And while I'm thinking of things that might have had sake poured into them, maybe that's what that was going on there and Gator was just destroying the evidence. Well, unfortunately I got nothing, so I'll try putting the po photograph on We're Always Aware. <laughs> Yeah, figured not. I'm surely, I'm surely supposed to put whatever I'm putting here. Genuinely, the only thing I can think is the dumplings that were buried in the yard. Oh, this is this has suddenly got very bad. Oh, unless soba broth is typically alcoholic in some like or has alcohol in it used in its production, and I don't know about it. This this might be a a matter of like <laughs> trivia. I don't know about, <laughs> about soba broth, and maybe the idea is that since since. Wendo rearranged the cards. He had his hands all over it and maybe got into his system that way. Is that what we're getting at? Only, no, because this happened. Although I don't think Wendo's the killer, what we're trying to get at is that maybe this Owen Forth was the killer, and if Owen Forth wasn't out yet, the cards wouldn't have needed to be rearranged, so he wouldn't have had any reason to touch it. I have absolutely got nothing here. Is there any mention that someone else prepared food for him at some point? Well, we say that Wendo was to do his soba glutton routine, but he actually did the time soba one, which it's not clear if he actually had to eat anything on stage for that. I assumed he was kind of miming it, so it's not like we could say that the soba he ate was alcoholic. The only thing I can think of food that seemed suspicious at the scene of the crime was these dumplings, but there's no evidence that uh, Wendo ate any. Is there? Ah, uh, this is so, it's definitely one of those ones where, like, I had such a good rhythm going, and now this one thing is interrupting me, and it's gonna drain all my health. <laughs> you know, I already drained two when I should have only drained one, because I was like, maybe they're just being pedantic about which point to put it on, but I'll try Simon's statement here, but I don't, I, just because it's the only thing they reference, like, food that was, like, being disposed of in a sketchy way, but they never mentioned uh, window eating it, so it shouldn't do anything. Okay, good. Okay, it, so none of the, it, I have to clearly, if they're letting, if they're giving me the opportunity, the option to pick something else in this picture, I have to do it. So they, I guess they want me to pick the cans in the fridge, but that's really, really weird if, because I don't have any evidence those are drinks are alcoholic. <laughs> I didn't have any evidence that the camel was alcoholic either. And yet I would have lost health for it. This is really, really strange, the way this is working. But I can't I can't see any way out of it the way it's set up now. So I, I presumably the, the fact that they're letting me reset this 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 pressing is what I'm supposed to do here. Do I have any proof? No, but I can make a wild guess and, you know, hope that the game <laughs> sees what I see. There were dranks in the fridge? I mean what else in here could do it? If not the camel. Wendo was most likely smacked over the head with this, and that's why he passed out. That ain't it. 
Hey, baby, he's softer than noggin, but I don't see a single bruise on my head, do you? Well, then maybe it wasn't so much a smack as a swing and a miss. Well, what a coincidence, Defense. Your assertion was a swing and a miss, too. Good. I think window didn't need to be hit over the head to lose consciousness. Lord knows Bucky has passed out several times today without being smacked. Miss Likes, please burn out this proof of yours. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Is there something I should know about, like, buckwheat flour or something that I don't? That it, it can, if left out, like, ferment quickly or something weird like that? Like, the fact that they let me do this one again makes it sound like there are multiple things I could pick here. Because why Why else would you be allowed to do it again? But if it wasn't the drinks, in the, if the drinks in the fridge weren't alcoholic and there's no evidence they were, and, and it wasn't the camel and there's no al evidence that it was alcoholic, we don't, they just told us that after, after we already picked it, then what? Oh, they don't just want us to say that since it was the same brand, this could have also had alcohol in it, because that's not evidence. <laughs> that's a guess, again. I mean... Take that. No, okay, that isn't it. Well, that was, uh, it's all gone down from here. Unless they wanted me to pick the one that was half-eaten, but that's... It's the same thing as picking the ones in the bag. We're saying that the bun has alcohol in it, so that wouldn't make sense. Uh, but I may as well try it, since I'm completely out of ideas. Oh, I just noticed that was our first time dying as Athena. Well... First time for everything, I suppose. So I'll try this bun, then I'll give a try at uh, the, the noodles in case there's something I don't understand about how that works. <laughs> and then I will look for something else. Okay, so I, I'm starting to think that there's there, the the camel sake is the only thing to pick in here. I, I was assuming by game design paradigm, basically every other time in this series that I can remember, when they've given you a thing where you press and it's like, then show some evidence. The next time you press, that one disappears. So that you you know, okay, I'm done with that point. So because that didn't happen, I assumed there was something else I could push on here. Uh, but it seems like the camel is the only one. In which case, I just don't know what I'm supposed to present on the point that gets added after. So like, maybe I put the this thing here because it's got a camel symbol on it? I don't understand. <laughs> this shows what most likely made a window lose consciousness. That note? Are you feeling lightheaded, child, or perhaps a bit peckish? I'm not hungry, and my head feels just fine, thank you very much. Look at the paper this note is written on. Isn't there something familiar about it? What exactly is your point, Defense? Mm, uh, this fake design here reminds me of the paper from... Yep, it's a piece of the wrapping paper on the box of manju buns by the victim on the floor. Wendo, you may not have drunk any sake, but you did eat a sweet red bean bun, right? Well, yes, that's right. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, Wendo, but I believe the manju you ate caused you to fall unconscious. The bean bun? But how? Because those buns contain a secret ingredient. A very punchy ingredient of that. A punch secret ingredient? Yes. The design of the wrapping paper matches that of something else in the room. It does? All right. <laughs> okay, so there are like three things weird about that. Number one, just because two things are made from the same producer does not mean they have the same ingredients. <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. Like, you might guess, but nevertheless, the buns are also in this picture, so I don't know why you're not allowed to present this picture. Like, the camel is visible on this bottle and this box here, right? So you should be able to point to the camels here to indicate the camel here. They're both camels. <laughs> Like, is that, is that so ridiculously outlandish? It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> Why did I have to point to this camel from this piece of the thing that was way over here instead of the one that was right beside it? Oh, is it maybe because this game was originally on like 3DS, the resolution was so low that you wouldn't have been able to see that? That may be. But wow, what a weird, weird thing they wanted you to pull. They wanted you to not only assume that this was alcoholic for the, in the first place, which I did, to be fair, because I couldn't think of anything else, but then assume that since this was made by the same people, it also had alcohol in it. But you're not allowed to say that by pointing at them, because of they've got a camel mark on them, but because of this other piece of wrapping paper somewhere across the room that had the camel on it. I can't be the only one who played this and was like, who assumed the camel connection earlier because I was out of ideas and decided that the box was good enough to show that, right? Am I missing something really big here about why this other scrap from across the room makes more sense? 
I'm <laughs> just like completely lost. Anyway, um, the design on this box object matches that of the Manju box's uh, wrapping paper. Wait, what matches the Machu Bun box wrapper? Well, the, the, the alcohol. You know, the thing I pushed first. <laughs> the camo pattern is the same as the one of the for camo brand sake! Yes. <laughs> I pointed that out like six times. So just as the window said, he didn't drink any sake per se. But he did eat some. Impossible. The window had a camel brand red bean bun. Which boasts a nice shot of sake as one of its ingredients. Sh so the defense is claiming that a window passed out of after consuming a camel sweet bun. Which he also ate by cutting it perfectly in half and leaving no crumbs whatsoever with magic. Right, well, that was weird and dumb, but uh, the rest of this is going great so far. I'm loving this case. And I will continue to love it next episode, because that's all the time we have for now. But next video on the channel is going to be some more Wii Sports. So thank you so very much for coming around. Hopefully I'll see you around. Emerald's going to be out of here now. <gasps> Peace! But now I'm getting led into the game points. This is going great. But it'll be my serve again. I'm very lucky that they- Ah! Oh, my brain didn't catch up with that one. That was an out and they returned it, so I was like, Oh, they returned my out, so then I saw their ball coming towards me. I was like, that's an out, right? <laughs> I guess my- I think I still have the previous one.